Hi guys, I'm Mike. Hi, I'm Shelly. And we are camping with the Confers. Today we are going to do a modification on this kitchen table. I think we figured out a way to fix six different problems just by doing this mod on this table. And my only request from him was that I don't lose the storage. I really like all the storage that is in this dinette area. Yeah, the storage is nice, but something's got to change with the table. It's just too much of a pain. So he's convinced me that he has a solution to this problem. And we're going to take you guys step by step of what I'm going to do to this thing. And we're going to make it way easier to get this thing set up and still keep all the storage and stuff that Shelly wants. So stick around with us. And hopefully it goes as he plans. It seems like a pretty simple job in my head but we'll see what the rest of the project brings. So stick around with us and we'll show you step by step of what we're doing to modify this kitchen table. All right guys, so I forgot to mention this table modification will work on just about any maker model that has this type of pedestal table in the kitchen dinette. We have a Grand Design Reflection 260RD um, 2020 model. Hopefully it helps out. So, if I play this thing out in my head correctly, you're not going to need very many tools, I think, to do this project. When we got this widget off of Amazon, it didn't come with any instructions. So, we're kind of winging it as far as the tools go, but I think it's going to be pretty simple. All you're going to need is just a regular pencil, a 10 millimeter wrench. I like the Sharpies because it's easier to see on the wood. A tape measure, a screw gun because... I'm lazy and I don't want to use a screwdriver and a very small drill bit for your pilot holes for your screws. So we picked this guy up on Amazon, just a set of legs that will go down to bed size and then it racks up to table size and locks in place. So it should be a pretty simple project. Let's take this table off of over here and we'll get started. All right, first thing we gotta do is get this table off of here. And if it's like you guys, this, those legs get stuck on there pretty good. Just one more issue that you have to deal with on a regular basis. And I think this is going to take care of a couple different things for us. So first thing we're gonna do is get rid of these guys. Shouldn't need these at all ever again. We're just going to sit them over there off to the side. So first thing, we have to take these brackets off. And we're going to need to take this center bar off, which looks like it's either one of those little square heads or a Phillips. Check it out here and see what we've got. Let's see if the Phillips head works. Okay, so we got that guy out of there. Now remember, if you're reusing screws, don't use the long screws in this next bracket because these ones that come out of the center piece will be way too long and you'll run them right through the face of your, your table. Next, we're gonna take off these little black brackets that used to hold your legs. Same thing, we're just gonna pop all these screws out of here. We're going to keep these screws we'll use those for the install on the other piece once you get these screws out of here set them off to the side on your countertop or something not on your bench because you'll accidentally drop one in there and sit on it and then you'll have a hole poked into your seat cushion which is not good Next thing we're going to do is take these guys off of here we don't need them anymore just set those off to the side out of the way. Make sure we've got a nice flat surface here to work with. And we should be good to go there. So let me get the new little widget. Now remember, 
on your table, the curved end of it points out into your kitchen, not back toward the back, and you want your handle to be toward the front. So when you put it on there, make sure that your handle is pointed toward the front of your table. So we'll just kind of set it in there and get it close-ish to center. Let's grab our tape measure and our Sharpie and our pencil. Okay, so we got to get this thing pretty close to center between these two bars. So we're at four and a quarter there. We're at four and a half, so that'd be four and three eighths. It'd be halfway. Four and three eighths, four and three eighths, right on. It's a little bit crooked this way. perfectly centered so we'll take our sharpie and we're just gonna make dots in the center of each one of these little holes so once we get this little project done like I said we can think of six different things that this modification is going to fix that you guys are probably having all the same problems with. So now that all of our holes are, our holes are marked, we're going to take this off and set it down here on the ground. And you can see on top there, we've got a spot for each one of our pilot holes. I don't know if you can see them in the video or not, but I know where they are. We're going to grab our drill over here. And give ourselves just a little bit of a pilot hole so we don't split any wood drilling your pilot holes make sure you don't drill through the face of your table because that'll be all bad so about how deep are you drilling maybe an eighth of an inch deep for your pilot holes all you really want to do is give a little bit of stress relief to that wood when the new screws start into it that way you're not splitting anything out so with the old ones there were six screws in each of the round pieces that were initially hold, held your legs on there are eight screws in each one of these, so you're going to have to either go pick up two more little pan head screws like this, but I think the six that you already have on each side is going to be plenty. So let's take our legs and set them back up here. We're going to line it up with our new pilot holes that we just built, or that we just screwed in there. We'll get our screws over here. Sit those down here. Before you tighten all these things up, just go ahead and get one started in your first hole so it kind of keeps it in the right spot. Now mine just happened to be lined up with all the other holes, so that works out good. We're gonna run this down in. Just for kicks, now that I have four screws in there, let's feel under here and make sure they didn't come through. Nope, they're good. Probably should have checked that on the first screw, but rookie mistake. We'll just repeat the process over here on this side. I'm doing the outside three and without that center bar you're actually picking up two center bars and a support all the way across the middle so even losing that one little wooden center bar you're not going to lose any structural stability with this steel bar and that 
that's it. Let's see if it works. All right, let's move this out of the way. We're just going to sit it over here. And if you'll notice, one of the things that this table is going to fix is now you have a coffee table in front of your couch. But wait, there's more. You can come up here and move the uh, sawhorse out of the way. You can move it up here and be just a little bit taller. And now you have a desk to work in front of your couch. Pretty nice. All right, so now that the table is finished up, now the last thing we have to do over here is take the pegs off of the floor, which is the same process as taking them off of the bottom of the table. Let's take those six screws out. Now we will have to seal up those holes with some silicone or some RBT sealer or something, but when you take those screws out of the bottom, make sure you don't use these in your tabletop because they are a little bit longer and they'll probably pop right through your table. So let's move this stuff out of the way what, and we'll see how it fits. What length of screws did you need to buy since you couldn't reuse those screws? Uh, I did not measure the ones that were in the tabletop. So if you want to do, if you do want to get the extra screws, just measure those before you screw them in and go to your big box store or your local hardware and pick some up that are the same length. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's bring the table over here. just kind of step on these legs a little bit. I just want to see if it's going to make all my dreams come true. Slide it up and lock it into place. Oh, it is locked into place. And now you can come back here and sit at the back of the booth if you'd like to. And still be able to use your table. Perfect. Now let's lower it down. We'll get it set on the bed rails. And then we'll adjust the feet down on the bottom so it sits just perfect on the floor while it's down in the bed position. So all you have to do to put it down is grab this handle right here, pull it out, step on your foot, and rock it right down, just like so. And then slide your table into where it belongs for the bed position. Wow, that is so nice. And then we'll just adjust the feet down to where they're touching. And that's where that 11 millimeter wrench comes in so we can tighten those feet up. I need my wrench for the front two legs. They're a little bit too tight to do with your fingers. Now is that, Michael, are you doing that because it was wobbly? No, so it's sitting on the rails for the bed. Oh, so you need to extend the length. So you need to extend length. these down, so now this is all being supported by the feet. Okay. For when you put a body in there, especially if you have adults that are staying with you. Yeah. Well, this leg's being persnickety. Slide this out here where we can flip it up and take a look at it. So those legs are all nice and where we want them to be. There we go. That one was giving me some problems. And then we'll slide it out and we'll tighten up those nuts. And it does have nice little rubber feet. So you don't have to worry about scratching up your floor when you're moving the table around. So you just take that nut, 
slide it up there to the top and tighten it up. There we go. Just like that. Now you have your sleeping space for when you're making a bed. You can pull it out and you have your kitchen table. Could it be like a coffee table like right there? Probably not because it's um, too long. Actually, if you wanted to bring it down with the right hand, if you wanted to bring it down, you were just wanted to sit it anywhere really. Here's something else. You've always wanted an island in your camper. Well now you have an island in your camper. So you have a little more kitchen counter space while you're cooking. If you want to work, you can bring it over here, sit it in front of your couch with your laptop, and you can work. You can drop it down from there. You can play board games. You can play board games. Yeah, that's perfect. And on those crappy winter days, if you have friends over, two of you can sit on the couch, two of you can sit in your camp chairs on this side, and you can play cards. But now, when we're sitting here in the mornings, we can drop this old girl down, and we have a coffee table. We can sit here and watch our cartoons on Saturday morning. It's gonna fix all kinds of problems for space in your camper. And when you're traveling, if you need this space to store stuff, this will fit with your slide in in your hallway right here. And, and. But wait, there's now more. I can get to all of my storage back here. This is where we used to keep all the stuff that we rarely ever use because we couldn't get to it without taking the table out and taking the cushions out to get to the storage. Now, you can get to the storage. Boom. Yeah, also, if you need extra table space outside, if your picnic table is full or whatever, or your boondocking. it's small enough, you're boondocking, you need table space outside for, you know, when you're prepping food for your grill or whatever. It's small enough. You flip it up on its side. You can walk it right out the door and you're set to go. I hope this helped you guys out. Wait, I want to show them my favorite part. Oh, okay. Show them your favorite part. My favorite part. Well, the island, this is going to be nice really for an island. But let's pretend to the beginning of the story table's here. Michael's on the couch doing whatever it is Michael's doing on the couch. And look at this. If I needed a cabinet, look. Wow. I can reach everything. Do you need something? I can get it for you. No, I'm good. Okay. You work so hard. It might be time for cocktails with comforts. Oh, what are you making? It's a love potion. All right, guys. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Um, it was a pretty simple project. It went about as I, it went about the way that I expected it to. Yeah, like it took like less than 15 minutes. Yeah, it was super quick. Um, as long as you got some basic tools, um, it's not a difficult project to pull off. So definitely worth it in our eyes. Uh, if you've done the same thing or something different, or you're looking for suggestions or more detail of how I did it, leave it in the description box down below. Um, and we'll leave links to all the tools and stuff that we used down in the description box as well. Leave your questions in the comments section. Ah. We'll put the links in the description box. That too. Yeah, because we, we really put this project off for a while. I've been wanting to do it. I've been researching what, what options there were. Last, and I just, it was I pretty early last year. I didn't want to lose storage, uh, and I didn't want to lose the sleeping space. So this worked out perfectly. I'm super happy. Thank you so much. Good. So guys, remember, you got to keep your adventures going. This is Mike and Shelly with Camping with the Confers, and we will see you in a few minutes for... Cocktails with Confers. Cocktails with the Confers. Special My recipe. Special Valentine's Day edition. A love potion. Stick around. Okay, guys, I'm going to make a cocktail. Um, 
and it is called Love Potion because it's almost Valentine's Day. So um, I've already, I have these two glasses that I rimmed in red sugar just for the fun of it. And this uh, recipe has Tito's, um, some peach liqueur, you could also use peach schnapps, and ruby red grapefruit juice. Oh, it's on both sides. Okay, so it's a real simple recipe. We take a third of a cup of vodka, which I should have pre-opened. Wasn't too bad. One third of a cup, and this cocktail is for two. It makes two, so. One third of a cup, and two ounces of the peach. I've never had this New Amsterdam peach something. I don't know. So hopefully it's okay. We'll try it out and let you know. And then one cup of ruby red grapefruit juice. Should add a nice pink hue to this cocktail. I want to see you pour that cup into that shaker without spilling it. Oh, I'm going to do it. See? See that? See? Now, the true story is I really didn't fill it up all the way because Michael made me nervous. So, there's a little bit extra. Okay, so that's all the ingredients. And then we take the shake. I once heard that you're supposed to shake for 40 shakes for a cocktail. I don't know if that's true. And For the occasion and I just cut these strawberries in the shape of hearts just to make it festive and that is all well, here's thank Michael you. thank you for fixing my table headache headaches cheers mm, let's try it Oh, it's very martini-y, so it's strong. You can still taste the grapefruit juice that I'm not a big fan of, but it's not bad. Mm. I wouldn't put it in my top 10. The sugar rim is good. Tasty. Yep. If you guys have liked this video and enjoyed hanging out with us today, if you could do us a favor and hit the subscribe button, a thumbs up, and a notification bell, it would really help us out. And then we can see you next time. Thank you.